Welcome everybody to Kabaddi YouTube. This is a recap. My name is Yeshua Durkin. I'm running this group every night, every Sunday night. We have a class on le lessons in Kuntras Hechal. Hechal to oh, camera shows it mirrored or whatever, but it's lessons in Kuntras Hechal to of Sichas in English. Uh, we just. Last night we did chapter 2 and 3 of the book of the Holy Sefer, of the Rebbe Shab. And I'm going over it just to get a better recording. And it's also good that when you learn Torah, to review anyways. I especially review when the recording wasn't good the first time. Okay, so we started with the summary of the last one and then we started with the new. Kitzur Milchemes. Midyon Shayeches Lemoisha Vehistal Kusoy. Summary the war Midian against Summary the war against Midian. Its connection to Moshe and his passing. That's what chapter one was about. This chapter introduces God's command to Moshe to take the revenge against Midian. The Rebbe Rashab poses questions that require us to dig deeper in order to understand the inner meaning and spiritual significance of the conflict against Midian, why Moshe had to lead the war against them and its relevance to our lives. These questions and those raised in chapter 2 are the gateway through which we will begin to explore the concepts which lie at the heart of this mimer. Now I'm just going to go through the concepts because I already did the Hebrew. I'm just going to read it in English this time. Just so it could be understood. I'm going to read it in English and explain. This chapter continues the theme of the first, presenting further questions regarding God's commandment to Moshe to wage war against Midian. In this chapter, the Rebbe Rashab also introduces one of the basic Hasidic themes of the Mimer, but Midian serves as the counterpart in the realm of the evil to God's name Havaya. It is also necessary to understand the fundamental nature of the war against Midian. The principal reason behind it was for the children of Israel to exact retribution from the Midianites, rather than to acquire their lands. For the Torah implies that the land of Midian did not become part of Israel's inheritance. The lands inherited by the tribes of God, Reuben, and half of Manasseh had belonged to Sichon and Og. Now why do we have to go to war against Midian? Bilam went to curse the Jewish people. And he was unable to, as we say in the morning blessings, Yisrael. That whole thing, he's blessing us because we're modest and we're such a holy nation, so he couldn't curse us because we were too holy. Therefore, his way to bring us some sort of a downfall was to get us to do sins with idol worship and adultery. And then Pentecost slaughtered. Cosby and the leader the leader of the Midianite tribe. I keep forgetting his name. The, and the guy that was in charge of the, the leader of the tribe of Shimon. And uh, Pinchas slaughtered them. And then Moshe Rabbeinu was commanded by Hashem to arm, arm ourselves. So, these lands were also not part of the land originally destined for the Jewish people. They were conquered by the Jews through wars led by Moshe. However, in contrast to the land of Midian, these lands became part of the inheritance of the Jewish people. As Rashi explains on the phrase, Atharas and Dibon. Rambam's understanding of the narrative conflicts with the above, commenting on the words, The elders of Midian... In Parshish Balak, he states that the territory of Midian was actually part of the land of Sichon. Thus, Midian was included within the land inherited from Sichon. According to this understanding, it must be said that the war with Sichon was not completed until after the war against the kings of Midian. Thus, Ramban's view differs from the previous statement that the Jews did not inherit the land of Midian and that the intention of the war might actually have been about conquering the land according to which the question raised by the Mimer no longer stands. 
However, the literal meaning of the scripture verse does not support Rambon's view, and therefore the statement that the land of Midian was not inherited by the Jews can be accepted. Thus, the principal reason for the war was retribution. It is necessary to understand a seeming contradiction within the narrative itself. When, co when quoting words, God's words to Moses, Scripture states, exact the retribution of the children of Israel. Yet Moses tells Israel to exact the retribution of God for Midian. We must understand what is meant by the retribution of God. Midian harmed only Israel, as it is written, for they harass you. As a response to this, it is said, Exact the retribution of the children of Israel. But what does this have to do with the retribution of God, and more particular, with God's name Havaya? Havaya refers to the four letters, letter name of God, Yodke Vavke, as it commonly pronounced in the study of Hasidus. This name is associated with a godly light that entirely transcends the structures of the world, being past, present, and future as one. True, the Rebbe offers a possible resolution why the verse speaks of both the retribution of Havaya and the retribution of the Jewish people. As it is written, part of God is his people, and he kept them as the apple of his eye. And our sages say, whoever touches them, it is as if he touches the apple of his eye. From these texts it follows that the retribution of Israel is simultaneously the retribution of God. All this is indeed true. However, from the specific wording of the text, exact the retribution of Havaya against Midian. The implication is that the war against Midian is intrinsically connected to God's name Havaya. Therefore, the resolution offered above is not complementary is not completely satisfactory and further explanation is necessary. The intent is that Midian, as well as being an actual nation, is representative of a spiritual force, a power in the realm of evil. From the above verse, it appears that the cleap of Midian is the evil counterpart and force opposing God's name, Havaya. When Midian caused Israel to sin, through the activity and expression of its klipa, an example of the evil that it is its spiritual source, a blemish was brought upon the name of God. An example, there was an obstruction to the revelation of godliness. Now, when anybody ever sins, there's a blemish to the name of God in general. But the sin of idol worship and adultery, these are two of the Ten Commandments, two of the seven laws of Noah. They're very severe sins. And it was a major blemish to the name of God. Concerning this, it is written to exact the retribution of Havaya from Midian. An example, by taking revenge against them and destroying them. The Jews who rectify that blemish on the surface this is difficult to understand. How is it that Midian is the evil counterpart of the God of God's name Havaya? To the point that destroying them is called the retribution of Havaya. One might think of the seven Canaanite nations would cause a greater blemish in God's name Havaya. For as is well known, they represent the seven evil attributes, the antithesis of holiness. Every entity in this world is a representation of the spiritual reality above. Just as there are seven emotive qualities in the realm of holiness, corresponding to the seven Medos, there are seven emotive qualities in the realm of evil. The seven Canaanite nations are an embodiment of these seven undesirable qualities. Therefore, there was a need to conquer the lands of these seven nations and transform them into Eretz Yisrael, thereby including them in the realm of holiness. So the seven laws of Canaan represent the seven Midos, as we know them, that we're refining in Spiros Omer, the seven, seven Midos, but it's in the realm of, of Klippa, the opposite of holiness. Midian, however, is not one of these seven nations. Another matter requiring explanation is the, is the Torah's use of the word hechaltsu, arm yourselves. Yechaltsu in the third person would have been more appropriate. To explain hechaltsu implies all of you. 
But since the verse states, armed from you, meaning that the people did not all go to war, only 1,000 per tribe, as the Torah subsequently indicates, which is why the text states, from you, an example, part of you, rather than all of you. It follows that Yechaltsu, rather than Hechaltsu, would have been the preferred term. For the latter refers to the Jewish people as a whole, implying that they all should arm themselves and ardently prepare for this war. The Rebbe Rashab is explaining that it seemingly would have been more appropriate for the verse to use the term Yechaltsu, because it implies that soldiers would be selected from among the tribes, while Hechaltsu implies that the entire people would go to war. Another question regarding the passage. Instead of stating 1,000 per tribe for all the tribes of Israel, seemingly the verse should have said from every tribe. The Rebbe Rishab is quoting a question posed by the Altar Rebbe in Likute Torah, Bamibur, page 85d, which focuses on the grammatical construction employed. The Rebbe Rishab does not answer this question explicitly in the Mimer here. See Lakuta Torah locations, page 88b, where the Alter Rebbe explains that the words Licho Matos indicates that the war was fought as a combined effort of the entire Jewish people. So although it's saying, Hey Chaltzu, all of you, and only a thousand went, the effort to destroy this nation came from everybody. So it was hey Chaltzu because the effort came from all of us. That's what the Alter Rebbe is saying here in, in Lakute Torah. Whereas Ye Chaltzu would mean that it's not important for everybody. Kitzer, so the summary is the intent of the war against Midian that it was fought for revenge and not conquest. It was, it's the opposition to God's name, Havaya, and questions on the language used in the Torah, which implies that the war against Midian was to be fought by the entire Jewish people. That concludes for chapter two. Uh, I'm going to make a video right after this. This is just to make a pause point so people only have to. Uh, Watch 12 minutes at a time for the video.